This video is a recording of the webinar that we held on the 4th of May 2020, where we will guide you through the steps on how to create the C19 TERS report from the newly created in product report, which is available to Sage 200C, Sage Classic, and Sage Premier products. These are unprecedented times which may lead to ever changing information. The information presented today is up to date at the time of presenting. Please ensure that you are registered on Sage City to keep you up to date with any changes in product specific information. Where relevant, references will be provided to other documents or websites. Various relief measures have been announced. Sage prides itself in delivering products that are legislative compliant and only assess the changes once published and then communicate how this will impact the payroll and if software updates are required. The explanations provided in our report are based on our current interpretation and the latest information received from the Department of Employment and Labour. This export report will give you flexibility with regards to the content that will be exported to your TERS file and will create the TERS file according to the sample provided by DOEL. It is your responsibility to confirm the correctness of the data to be submitted to the DOEL. Ensure all relevant documentation is completed as per the auto-reply email from UIF. You can use this file then to submit on the online portal available. As communicated in our Sage City Post, we will release a new C19 TERS report for Sage Classic, Sage Premier and Sage 200C VIP during this week. Your payroll needs to be on release 5.4b before you can run this installer, which will deploy the relevant files to the system. You will run this installer like you would run a normal update installer. Once you have run this installer, you will need to import the report first. Follow the guidelines provided on the Sage City Post. Once the report has been imported, you can then run the report. Locate the TERS data report, which is real number 770, and double click on it to open. You will see that the report gives you the option to either run it for the current company, which will be the company that you are logged into, or to run the report for multiple companies. If you select to run the report for multiple companies, it will list all the companies that have the same UIF registration number. We do recommend that companies with different setups to be exported separately, even if they have the same UIF registration number. Companies must always still be in the same month end to ensure the correct values are included in the submission file. Once you have made your selections, click on Continue. In the selection who must be paid, you have three options. You can either select that the money must be paid to the employee, to the employer or to the council. You must complete the banking details of the company in the area provided. This will be used if the company must be paid or if there are employees that do not have banking details. If you have an agreement with the council that they must be paid, then enter the council's banking details. The sector minimum wage that must be captured is the monthly equivalent of your sector minimum wage. As per the auto reply email from UIF, the minimum wage that will be used to determine the minimum payment to employees is 3,500 Rand. So whether you complete your sector minimum wage or 3,500 Rand, the UIF will only be working with 3,500 Rand. The pay as you earn number that you need to select to export can either be employer or employee. If you select to export the employer's pay as your number, that will be the reference number as completed on the basic company information screen. If you select employee, it will then export the employee's tax number as captured on the employee information statutory details tab. Where must the zip file be saved? The zip file can be saved either in your payroll folder and it will default to the location of where your system is installed, 
or you can click on the green browse button and select the folder where you would like to export the file to. The shutdown from and to dates. This will be the first day of the company shutdown period, so from when the employer had to close or partially close operations. In most scenarios, it will be the 27th of March, but if the employer paid the employees up until the 31st of March, then the date will be the 1st of April. The end date will be the last day of the shutdown period. In most scenarios, it will be the 30th of April in line with the national lockdown period. Value to be submitted as UIF remuneration. There are three options available. You can either select UIF remuneration, select the specific earning line or multiple earning lines to be added together, or you can select the rate per day calculation. And this calculation is then the employee's rate per day on the increase screen, which will be multiplied by the average number of days, which is 21.667. We do recommend that you select UIF remuneration. The new field that we've made available in the report is called Refer to Month. The value to be exported in the file must be for the last fully remunerated payroll month before the lockdown. If you paid your employees in full for March, then you will select March. Otherwise, you will select February as your last fully paid payroll month. As an example, if you select UIF remuneration for March, the report will export the UIF remuneration values for the month of March in the report. In weekly and bi-weekly companies, the month to date values will export in the file. Your leave income during the shutdown period. This is the portion of the UIF remuneration paid in cash or granted as a benefit during the shutdown period, as an example, salary wage or leave pay. This value will reduce the value of the benefit paid by the fund. If the employer will not be paying the employees during the shutdown period, this value must be zero. Click on Select Earning Lines to select the earning line or lines that is used for the payment during lockdown. In non-monthly companies, the month-to-date value of these fields will export to the file. If no payment will be made, then no selections are required in this section. The last version number. The file created contains a sequence number, for, as the example there, and ends in an underscore 01.csv, and the unique sequence number or the version number is the 01. You can increment this to ensure you do not send a file with the same name. So when you send the file for the first time, the unique sequence can be 1. When the second one is sent, it can be 2. This will avoid the first file being overwritten. We recommend that with your first one, keep the version number as zero. The CSV file will save as one. When you run the reports again, the version number will show as one, but the CSV file will save as two. The selections made on the screen will be saved for future for your convenience. That means, all the selections that you made during the creation of the report will be exactly the same when you run the report again. And if you need to change, you can then just make the relevant selections. Once all of the selections have been made, you can click on Continue. The following screen will be your employee selection screen. All employees in the company will be listed and you can select the employees that is impacted and for whom you want to claim from the terse relief scheme. Tick select all at the bottom of the screen and then only deselect the employees not to be included. Alternatively, you can select employees individually. All employees indicated with a yes in the last column will be included in the terse submission file. Once the employees have been selected, Click on continue. The file will generate and the following message will display. It will say that the zip file has been created and will also then show the location where you selected to save the file. The submission file and an Excel data extract will be zipped into a single file. The message will indicate the folder where the file is saved. Once the file has been unzipped, two files will be available, the Microsoft Excel file 
this is a normal Excel file containing the data that has been exported. And then your CSV file, which is the pipe delimited file that will be imported onto the online portal to do the submission.